The last concept that we're going to go over in section 7.1 is factoring by grouping. And this is a concept that um, a lot of students have difficulty with. So I'm going to go ahead and do a couple of the actual homework problems. Um, well, they're not homework, but they're in your book. And we're going to do evens like we have been doing in class up until this point. Um, and that way you can kind of see what we're doing. So um, most of the problems that you're going to be working with are going to have three terms. But what if we have an expression that has four terms. And if you look at each of these terms, there is no GCF for each term. So we have an M and M in this term, an M and an N. <laughs> but in this term, we have a four and an N. So there's no M in this term. We can um, say, oh, well, four goes into 24 and six goes into 24, but four and six, the, the GCF for those is two. But if we look at this term, this doesn't even have a coefficient. So you can't divide this term, this first term, by 2. So no matter which way you look at it, there's no GCF for each of these terms. And so this is when we're going to practice factoring by grouping. And this is a really nice um, concept to learn um, because it'll help whenever we start factoring trinomials um, in the next couple of sections. Um, factoring by grouping is kind of like um, a little way for some students to factor trinomials. Um, so learning this concept uh, might come in handy and I'll be going over this concept um, again whenever we get into factoring trinomials um, a little bit later on in the, the later on in the chapter. So the first thing that we're going to do with this is group the terms together. So factoring by grouping. So if you want you can go ahead and just group the two terms together. So I group the m and the n plus 4n together, and then the 6m plus 24 together. So they're two separate. And basically what you're going to do is turn these into two mini problems. So you're going to factor these two terms, and then you're going to factor these two terms. So it's like you're just separating the four terms, and you're just going to factor the first part, and then factor the second part. So if we look at the m, n, plus 4n, we can see that there's an n in both of those terms, correct? So we know that n would be our GCF. And what would be left over? m plus 4, because we took out the n from each term. So we'd have m plus 4. We can bring down our plus sign. Looking at the 6m plus 24, what would the GCF of each of, the, of those terms be? Well, 6, correct? We can take the 6 and divide it by 6, and we can take the 24 and divide it by 6 as well. So if we factor out a 6, what are we left with inside? m plus 4. So 6 divided by 6 equals 1. 24 divided by 6 equals 4. So now look what happened. Now we have two terms correct? So we have a term right here, and then a plus sign, and then a term right here. And if you look, you can see that each of these terms has something in common. They have, they both have the m plus 4. So what we're going to do is go ahead and factor that m plus 4 out. So we're going to take it to the front like we always do. So taking the m plus 4 out of each term, and what are we left with? n plus 6. So we factored out or divided each term by m plus 4, and then what we have left is n plus 6. So this is an example of factoring by grouping, where we just group the first two terms together, group the last two terms together, and find the GCF of each of those. And if you do it correctly, you should end up with what's in parentheses, this should be exactly the same. And that will become a GCF that you can pull out to the front. And what is left over will become your parentheses in the back. I will do another one of these problems for you.